Previously on Invincible. Wait, what? What was that? I don't remember that at all. <laughs> More subplots coming back. Invincible Season 2, Episode 8, the finale. You get out? Did Alan help him? Why do the Vilcomites bother with robots? I'm gonna put this right in my books. <laughs> That's so great. It seems you've passed inspection. Finally fit for your execution. Congratulations. That is the most Viltrumite thing I've ever seen. <laughs> like, it is gonna be a death by trial by combat, isn't it? You know, part of me is coming around to them a little bit. They are just god-awful, and I hate them. But they stick to their principles, and they have principles, even though they're god-awful and terrible and I hate them. It's something like how even good societies can be less fair than this. You're gonna feel... You'll feel... Mm. You'll feel... Invincible, damn it. <laughs> you could try, if you like. Do you want to take that risk? Is the Mark Grayson of this Oliver. dimension a risk taker? You hit me with a lot of information right now. Oh, and before I forget, I'm blocking all signals. Oh, he knows. Yeah, he has the benefit of knowing a lot of stuff from different dimensions. But Cecil already heard that. Did you know your identity is public in almost half of the realities you exist in? So careless. I mean, it's just a matter of time in this one as well. So many people know him. When we met before, you hadn't done this to me. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. You did this! Oh, no, Oliver. Why? All of them. Do you need help? Let me just... I had help! Oh, yeah, that's, that's the move. Telling an angry person that they need help. Other winning speech options include, You're crazy. Why are you overreacting? And calm down. But even they couldn't fix this! It's not that bad. I mean, so now, I don't know. I'll always have a reminder of you. Is that the problem? His physical appearance? Oh, I agree. Come get me. What? Oh, how? What is his edge though against Invincible? Just dimensional stuff? It's awfully confident. He put Debbie and Oliver on the floor. Okay, dimensional stuff. The episode where Mark discovers portals. Better get, hurry up and get back through that. Oh, it's no. Your window has. It's, it has closed completely. Oh, I sent him to dinosaur land. I was but a hatchling when I last tasted their succulent flesh. Ooh, and they speak tasted. English, no less. We can share. I smelled it first. It's mine. Stay back. No one's eating me. Oh, he gets it speak. <laughs> I want my taste. Wait, how did he? Okay, that was merciful. Or the dinosaurs, probably. You know, I haven't encountered him in any other reality yet. Isn't that interesting? Yes, we've won. We have the reality where Omni-Man bangs a mantis. That's how you know it's Earth-1. Jokes aside, I wonder what the actual linchpin of this was. What made this the universe where Omni-Man leaves Earth and reforms and Mark stays good? Was it the baseball game? Did Debbie save the universe more significantly than I thought? In all of the universes, Mark strikes out and Omni-Man is just disappointed and cannot see the beauty of human life. Also, there's something really irritating about the, this guy's voice. It kind of reminds me of Dobby from My Hero Academia. I can't quite put my finger on what that is. Something about his cadence. So do them a favor. And die. Oliver! No! Damn, Debbie! That football catch. Alt Spider-Man and Dr. Octopus. <laughs> Good timing. Talk about your bad luck, Prof Oc. Oh. Professor Octopus. No, are you can Wait, you, are you, trying to can hurt you come this back man? with us? <laughs> Look, I saw the portal. I know you're from another dimension. Got way too much experience with that. Especially lately. <laughs> wow, very meta. I love it. We can stay here for a bit. As long as Debbie and Oliver are safe. Let's explore the Spider-Verse. One wrong move and they fall. Don't fall for it, Mark. Oh, okay, yeah, that's I've got a dimension more difficult. all picked out where the ground is eight stories lower than it is here. If only he could kill this guy fast, he turned off that lamp when he was with Amber. You are a good person trying to do a good thing. After all the pain and suffering you've caused, the lives you've taken? No. 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 It's working. Daddy. 
I miss mommy. I want to live in the fox pet universe. Everything's gonna be. Oh, poor Angstrom. <laughs> you actually thought you could hide from me? What happened? It's so different. I like. I'm really so curious what the critical distinction was between the two universes. It can't just be baseball if Mark is one of the biggest differences. What happened? We have to know at some point, right? Because it's shocking to see Mark like this, you know, this this callous. For that matter, a cynical thought could be that actually in the other dimensions where Mark sided with his dad, it's because Omni-Man was a better father. <laughs> they paid more attention to him and their bond was stronger. I don't know. This is a really challenging question because obviously nobody wishes for pain. And in a certain way of thinking about things, it would be really nice if things were just always happy and blissful. And if we always felt good and people were for us what, what we needed them to be. But you don't know necessarily. A lot of times the pain in your life, if you have the wherewithal to get around it, ends up being the most important thing. It can define you for the good and vice versa. I'll kill the boy quickly. No! Let's see Mark do this, man. It's... Now yeah, that's in there. He's got that among many others. I mean, I think there's a way to handle this or approach this even without getting rid of or ignoring the pain. It's a conceptual realization that Mark is the only one who would agree this Mark and that this Mark is not an enemy or any of these people. I mean, clearly it's so night and day. This is not the Mark that we know. Man, there's a lot of them. There's gonna be a lot of them. This is gonna suck. Why is it always Mark too? I guess we're only seeing the Mark once. That's just stupid. I feel so eternally conflicted because it's so terrible, but also so awesome. Oh, that could be chills. That's just evil. There's a much faster way you could do that. You can do that with one move. He's just enjoying it. What were you doing in the other dimensions, Debbie? What did he bring back? What was that? Hold on. Okay. <laughs> I guess we're just not gonna address that. You can't hurt me with that. That's, that's light work. That was clever. Oof. Housing crisis dimension. Though actually, maybe Mark being at his home in another dimension will give us some insight. What's the difference? Neat. Okay. Instead, it's just zombies. God, the multiverse thing is so so terrible. <laughs> Even the greatest heroes have to just tune out inevitable suffering. I guess it's just like real life. I mean, maybe there's something about that that contains the essence of heroism. You understand the the futility to some extent of trying to stamp out pain that is just a part of life and still you never give up trying to make things better. I mean, taking that farther, trying to stamp out suffering and pain and evil outright once and for all sort of feels like a villainous thing to do or often leads to villainy. Now in all my research, I didn't learn how long his kind can go without food. <laughs> Damn, Debbie. With one hand and a baby. Don't just stop moving. Okay, good. Oh god, be careful. That could have just killed her. Stop this. Please. Yeah, please, would you stop? Just stop it. In so many other dimensions, you join your husband and son when they slaughter millions and make the earth burn. Interesting. You're a traitor. That answers my question mankind. about where Debbie was. Your family's legacy is blood. Nah, I don't take responsibility for anything other me's do. Sorry. I raised the boy who defied his father and saved this planet. Tell him, Debbie. You make it sound like this is the one world where Mark is good, and you're the one who's bad. What? Oh, that's why you're so angry. <laughs> oh, you wow, Mark Debbie's going in. And Mark is the hero for once. Whoops. Nailed it. Like, never once has someone gotten that mad because someone said something that was incorrect. <laughs> Not the villain, indeed. Won't somebody think of the children? Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm... He's just become everything he's hated. I'm even gonna make this child. <laughs> Great guy. Really fighting for justice and, you know, good stuff. I think just by the difficulty of heroism, what you commonly find is that if two sides are currently engaged in a struggle, it might mean that they're actually very similar, even though that truth would cut deep to acknowledge. You don't really tend to get agitated by people who say things that you, you know resolutely, confidently to be completely false and wrong. Or there has to be some sort of threat there. So, you know, you might get riled up by physical violence, right? Which doesn't always mean you're in the wrong. It just means there's some actual threat there that is equivalent to your capability. So like if someone threatens you physically, that might very well be you not being in the wrong and the other person being in the right. But 
what it does point to is that along the strata of physical threat, that person actually is equivalent to you or better than you and contains some risk. Like you would not be worked up at all if like a two month old child was punching your leg. You would just be like, knock it off, you know, and that's the end of it. So in areas where there's perhaps no physical threat, if it's just along the lines of the ideological, if one is getting riled up, it quite possibly means that there are things in there that are threatening. The equivalent to a two month old punching my leg in an ideological argument is something like somebody calling me a blue carrot. It's like, I'm not a blue carrot. That's absurd. It's just funny. And the true goal sort of gets lost in identity. You know, like I'm the good one. Of course, I'm the good one. And this is the bad one. And because it's so bad, the goal is just to destroy, to take down by any means. But then of course, maybe there's a reckoning. You're like, well, isn't this exactly what I hate? Isn't this exactly the thing that I'm fighting against? Isn't this exactly what I'm accusing the other person of? And in its worst form, it's not actually trying to achieve anything at all. The stated goals are sort of obfuscating the real motivation, which is just preservation of one's ego because it's threatening. The attachment to the idea of I'm the good one. I'm going to make this child hurt just the most obvious possible thing. I have no idea what he's done to my mom or my brother. Mark trauma dumping on these campers. How did you get here? Where did you come from? This guy again. You're a man who dresses like a bat. And your name is... Well... You know, I mean, like, don't you think that's kind of lazy? <laughs> that's like most superheroes, though. Any animal-based superhero. I wasn't in the mood. Oh, it's Mad Max. I wasn't in the mood for what? Why aren't you coming through? I need you to pay attention to me. Why aren't you paying attention to me? Psychological warfare. You, you can't, uh, yeah, you're angry. Don't kill him though. Rise above. Remember those doctors I told you about? The ones who rebuilt my body? Why is he so strong? Okay, he's got that too. We are not ready for the Vilkermites. On the plus side, is this training? Are we training? Did you think anything less than killing you with my bare hands would satisfy me? This is the second time Mark's been in this exact situation in two episodes. You have no idea what I've been to. That's for damn sure. I've been holding back. Oh no! He's gotta draw the line at some point. And I say that not for this guy's sake, I don't care, but for Mark's sake. Okay, all right, okay. Maybe a couple more punch, a couple more. Uh... My family! Oh, no! Mark, no, no, stop! You okay? <laughs> I don't think he's okay. Oh, Mark, I'm so sorry. I mean, he's got extra brains, too. I don't want this for Mark. I didn't want this for Mark at all. He's a nice kid. No one has to know about this. Mark knows. I thought you were stronger. How do we get back, though? Isn't that a problem? What took you so long? All clear. One injured woman and child. For an agency that's always watching. Oh, thank God. Debbie. Where were you? The one time, the one time when he should beam in uninvited. Where's Mark? I don't know. Across the multiverse. Oh God. This is not great. Oh God, oh God, oh God. For so many reasons. I had to. I didn't have a choice. I had to kill him. This is gonna he suck for a while. Me. He was gonna kill my mom and my brother. He's just doing this, he doesn't feel this way. He it's not gonna work. do it doesn't work. I'm sorry. It could work. I mean, like, honestly, you could make the case that this is not so bad. For Mark, the important thing is he does feel like it's pretty bad. That's genuinely how it feels. It's not going to work out this way. You can't just tell yourself something you don't believe and believe it. It was an accident, but he made me do just it. Just cycling through every possible thing. I lost control. There it is. I wanted to kill him. Okay. That feels better, even if it's terrible. What does that make me? Human. I thought he was stronger. He told me he was stronger. He did tell you he was stronger. He did look pretty strong, admittedly. But you just kept going. You just kept landing those... Oh, you know those moments right after you've done something terrible and you, you're like, crap. This is going to be forever, isn't it? Where am I? Yeah, there's a bigger practical problem right now. He took me here and I killed him. I'm stuck here. There it is. I'm stuck forever. I can't get home now. You better hope there's someone else who can do this. I'm going to die here. 
maybe alone. This at first glance seems like an inherent flaw or problem in life where it's so much easier to mess things up than it is to do things right. So like, for example, let's say you live 20 years with no incident and then you, for who knows what reason, just where you are at the moment, some impulse comes over you and you steal something. You are then a thief, you know, like it doesn't matter what came before that. You can never again say you've never stolen, if that makes sense. Or you've been in a relationship for five years or you've been in multiple relationships and you've always been loyal and then one time you cheat and in your mind, you're then a cheater. So much of Mark's internal composition has been, I don't kill. I don't want to kill. I'm different from my father. I'm a hero who respects life. And from his perspective right now, especially because it's the most recent thing he has to look at and it's like literally he's covered in blood. He's a killer, you know, like it all, what, what was it all for? The only silver lining is that I think sometimes you need to know you're capable of something in order to have real defense against the thing. I have a feeling it's the people who think they're not capable of certain things that are the most susceptible to those things because they're not really paying attention to where the dangers actually come from. They're not adequately respecting the power of certain impulses as they occur in specific situations. And two, because of that confidence, they're not taking precautions to avoid those sorts of things or, or doing their best to steer clear of things that might compromise their self-control. In this case, that's not true for Mark. I mean, this guy showed up at his dimension, in his house. But, okay, wow, I, I actually can kill. I lost control. That sucks big time. I'm not going to let this happen again. I, that's the positive that comes out of it. If you want. I mean, the other maybe more likely thing is you've crossed the line now. And so it's now progressively easier to keep, continue crossing that line. And there's an escalation. Like very few people end up at an, at an extreme problem pervasive to their life all at once. It's a gradual thing. You know, it's one cigarette. It's exchanging numbers with someone you're attracted to, or I'll go to a bar, but I won't talk to guys, you know, whatever it is. What's reassuring to me about it overall is that he bounced back from the whole, he made me do it, it's not my fault. Because he could have just dug deeply into that and had that been his whole thing. The council states that in order for a Viltrumite to be executed, he must be whole and intact. Worthy to stand and face the end of his life at full strength. Is this the making him stronger? But they say nothing of bruises. This is not good. This is unfair. You're breaking the Viltrumite code, General Krieg. You suck overall. Sir, please. <laughs> they really respect him. I've looked up to you since I was yeah. a child. Don't make me hurt you. He's a Viltrumite hero. I merely wanted to stand. I'll walk out of here on my own. Respect up. Everyone liked that. Hello. Holy crap. My plan worked. What? Oh yeah, they can communicate. I'm here for you. Talk soon. Interesting. Alan's just a man. There was a civilization here once, it looks like. As far as I can see. Nothing. If only there was some way we could quickly move from place to place. You've really done it this time, Mark Grayson. I'm pretty sure this is the bigger, perhaps the biggest, bigger problem. Maybe his body could somehow still... There we go. Huh? What is it? Oh, wow. Oh, what? what? These different Earth Avengers? You look terrible. Well. It just happened. Maybe for you. For us, it was 20 years ago. What? It took us that long to find this dimension. Luckily, by that time, there were four working time machines in Guardian custody. Thank you. Thank you for working for 20 years. My God. For me. Wait, why? <laughs> what else is happening? Oh, the Viltrumites have taken over their universe. They're not that nice. Where's Rex? Oh, thanks. Wait, what? This doesn't help them at all. This is a whole whole other story we're not seeing. Is this just just charity? I have for a very long time, and when you disappeared, I was devastated. I I I should have told you. That's nice, but I'm not your mark. This comes up in Into the Spider-Verse too. Tell me. Tell her. Tell her you love her. But I don't or tell her you don't love her. Just okay. tell her something. Tell her. Something so that she can go on with her life. I don't know if his dimension Eve really feels that way explicitly. And there's definitely something there, but not like that. Besides, we have a new love interest. It's the Viltrumite girl. I suppose you weren't paying attention. There he is. But he's a robot now. Damaging the time stream. Shut up, Rex. Did Rex get a bullet to his head in this dimension too? I have so many questions. This is, it's insane. This neighborhood has been through a lot. I'll give you some time. Thanks, Cecil. Never speak a word of what happened to anyone. Always. <laughs> But he'll know. He'll still know deep down. And that's the worst of it. Oh, God. Got matching eyes. Mom. That means impressing the hell out of me this season, just through and through. Is it over? It's never <gasps> over. Oh, Mark. 
<laughs> like literally no one, no one would think that of all the perpetrators in this incident, Mark is the bad one. But Mark does because he didn't live up to his own expectations and because of what it means symbolically and because of how much it plays into Mark's fears of what he'll become and what he is. And one of the most painful things is the loss of faith. And the biggest one is the loss of faith in yourself. But what it really probably means is that there was just something that you weren't aware of and it made you aware of it, even if the result was terrible. And so that was probably something that you needed to experience. Anyway, I think the fact that he's so torn up about it, this is not really consolation. I don't want to use this as justification for terrible things, but it speaks to where his head is at and to who he is overall, that this would be his reaction. This would not be other people's reaction. It would not be the Viltrumite's reaction. It's not Lizard League's reaction. It definitely isn't other Universe Mark's reaction. You didn't have a choice. Don't beat yourself up over it. Not satisfying. You're not your dad, Mark. True. You weren't there. But not satisfying. I lost it. This is true. I just lost it. This, I think, is better. You didn't cross the line. You kept your mom and your brother safe. End of story. Both are true. All uh, the bad guys are usually the ones who break people's arms. And no threaten children. Get some rest. But there's something important about Mark's instinct there. You're not him. And there's something flawed about where Cecil's... The way Cecil's approaching this. You weren't there. So that's the word they're representing, I think, what a very common reaction would be, what I was alluding to earlier. But if you're really trying to think things through fully, and you're sort of hit with the full impact of what's going on, and you have higher aspirations, people trying to sort of pat it down into a comfortable territory that doesn't capture the full truth is unsatisfying at best, infuriating at worst, and very lonely. I would agree with Cecil to the extent that there are worse ways that could have gone. Like if Mark had died, and Debbie had died, and Oliver had died, and that brain dude was still alive, that's worse than this. After all, he was the attacker. Mark didn't seek that out. And yet, Mark had made a promise to himself, and had something he was trying to uphold, and he failed to uphold it. And that is a really critical experience for him, that he can't just sweep under the rug and I don't think should be swept under the rug. I think it's important to like look that dead in the eye. One thing Mark probably is doing wrong though is to not make that pervasive to your entire being and character. The earlier thing I was talking about with categorization about how you steal one thing and then you're a thief forever, that kind of thing has to be avoided. You are someone who one time stole something. That is true, but you never have to do that again. There is nothing about that experience that has determined your future theft in stone. It is added information to the complexity of who you are and to life that has to be incorporated and thought about and dealt with. Need He's gonna help? stare at me while I make spaffy sandwich. Sandwich. I'm sorry. I, I was just. You don't have to be broken. I'm trying to fix myself. Just but like I'll fix you. Transformations <laughs> are a problem. Oh wow! It's quadrupling down. And I fix problems. What's actually what I said? I care for you, so I wanted to fix your problem. There's something sh th she's not fully saying. He's misunderstanding. As apologies go, I. That's not a bad one. I thought it was terrible, but okay, I'm glad you liked it. And not just about what's wrong with me. Most days I'd rather talk about literally anything else. I think I understand. One thing I can relate to is personal problems you have that you've acknowledged that you really don't like, yet either haven't figured out a way to deal with or are not willing to deal with are a pain to hear from others or to have pointed out. It's like, yeah, I'm trying not to think about that for better or for worse. I mean, sometimes it's avoidance. Sometimes it's just, you know, you're trying to cope with something you don't know how to control. I don't know what to think about Rudy and his method because he was too persistent. But then there's a point, like, if you're that persistent and that dedicated, you break through. You, like, blast through whatever wall it is. So, uh... What's her actual age? You want me to talk about other stuff as well? Not like yeah, that. Now you That's, yeah, bizarre. Like maybe ask now it's strained. Date sometime. Oh, wow. This worked out big time for Rudy for some reason. <laughs> I mean, this is a date right now. We're on a date right now. We're eating, what was it? Spaffy sandwiches. This is good. This is this is good, right? Take some time. Okay. Interrupted. Is it I'm Kate? Sorry. Why? What is going on? Always I never thought. Uh, I was Always right. <laughs> My skepticism was justified. And like really quickly. This is real. I was gonna walk away. Become someone else. But I couldn't. Because of you. We could just stay in this log cabin. I got fish. As far as like wilderness cabins go, this one looks pretty amazing. Don't, just don't, just don't do it. Invincible. Never enough subplots. Oh no, he's angry flying. I want to be just like you. You will be, son. You will. Ooh, yikes. That looks different now, doesn't it? Though it could come full circle. Because Omni-Man's not who he was before either. I'm not my dad. I'm not my dad. Oh, you're not your dad. 
And you are your dad, in like the most beautiful way. Good, good, let it all out. Oof. Yeah, that's gonna be there all your life. God, there's been moments where I've done something I'm just, I thought was so detestable, and it felt like my life was over, because that feeling is so potent in that, in that time, and it's this thought of, this is gonna be with me forever. And actually, that's true. It is there forever. But what you don't anticipate in that moment is that you'll get around it, you'll understand it, and it can actually become something beautiful. Earlier today in the shower, I was thinking about something that might be the ultimate example of the whole I'm not my father thing. It's your quirk, not his. My reasoning could be totally wrong on this. I don't really have proof, just sort of got instinctual feelings. But I was thinking about the topic of envy. And for me, if I think about being envious, it's kind of linked to a potential for violence, right? Like if you covet something someone else has, there's a resentment in there, there's something like an anger in there. And I could almost feel like a physical response bubbling up to the surface from feelings of damn this person like how dare they have this thing that I want that I can't get or it's just something in that ballpark right and you guys can tell me if I'm way off there's got to be a reason why envy exists and why it proliferates throughout all of humanity I'm guessing and typically if there's something that exists in all of humanity or the animal kingdom at large it's because it served a very useful function and one function I can imagine that being is obtaining resources and like winner takes all type of thing so if you have two people one person has something and one person doesn't and one person gets envious and realizes well actually the best strategy the most optimal thing to get this reward is just like taking the other person out and then taking what I covet that probably aids survival which leads to increased ability to reproduce which might mean that in our evolutionary history, the people who were envious to the point of, let's say, murder were the ones that survived. And so we have very direct lineage to those things. Like we are here, possibly, likely, it seems to me, because of envious people who killed other people to take what they had. That behavior was rewarded to a very large, critical extent evolutionarily. So every time you have that feeling, you are having it and channeling it because you came from a line of people who did terrible things to other people to get stuff. I mean, even, you know, thinking about it right now, it seems like the chance of someone alive today not having at least one ancestor that committed murder it seems like it almost has to be zero. That's just what we're born into. And maybe that's one possible interpretation of the idea of original sin. However, thank God that's not the end of the story. Because what we also have is higher cognition and the ability to suppress basic desires. And that too seems to have been really important. So in our evolutionary history, that sort of immediate gratification, my survival above all else, ran its course, looped back into itself, where that strategy that was dominant up to a point started to eat itself. So we we also have the capacity for great generosity and concern for others and higher thinking and impulse control because that actually is really critical and more successful long term. All of those things, everything, every facet of humanity, good and bad. So in a very literal biological sense, we are the sins of our fathers, but also the virtues of our fathers. And we have the choice, given that we have all of these things, of how to take them and synthesize them and to create what we think is best and what we think we should be. <sighs> Stupid pain, I wish I could punch it. Like I said before though, I, I, it's encouraging to me that he's feeling it, you know, that he's acknowledging it. Really use a friend right now, but she looks happy. Tough. He's already gone. How about Eve? <laughs> Gas leak blew up the house across the street last year. Now your place? Oh, man, I gotta How get many my gas house leaks Yikes. in one neighborhood to get. Yeah, can never be too safe. My friend's house actually did blow up in a gas leak. That happened. And when I say blew up, I mean blew up and like she narrowly escaped. Thankfully, nobody was hurt, but it is a real thing. Oh, it's April Hassetter. If these walls could talk. <laughs> they definitely did it on hard mode too, like not moving. They just, that's a symbol. That's a metaphor. They stayed and faced it. We should get dinner going. You've got class tomorrow, right? Good God, why? Okay, normalcy, normalcy. He was in bed briefly. Sorry. I got a lot on my mind. No need to apologize. Things are gonna be different now. They're matching eyes, they? killing me. I'm quitting college. <gasps> Mark. It doesn't make sense. I'm missing all my classes, and the more it's, I think it was about inevitable. it, what's the point? All jokes aside, like, this Am is, I gonna be a dentist, it was only gonna go this way. A lawyer? A, right. a coder? Why would I do any of that? Right. I mean, anyway, college does play a role, as many people have pointed out. It's the normalcy. It's living life. It's having something outside of Invincible. But... I think there are other more realistic ways to go about that than university and probably more productive given the time. There are higher ROI things to that goal. This is your future you're talking about. You can't just quit college. Why is everyone so attached to college is the only thing. College does a lot more than just prepare you for a job. Mark? Right, but... It's too much. 
I can't do it. I have to get better. You have to train. To control myself. It's important. It's more important than sociology it's class. It's the most important thing I can do. It is. To Debbie's credit though, to, to the other point, to the other side of things, what I think Mark actually really does need is relationships. Good relationships. And he needs time to unwind. It can't be all this all the time. He's gonna break. Anybody would break. Maybe there are exceptions to this, but in my experience for who I am, no matter how much I try to tell myself I don't need other people, I need other people. I need relationships in my life. I always suffer when I step outside of that. I pay for it eventually in really significant ways that are often not immediately obvious. The relative isolation from 2020 to 2022 or whatever was in hindsight, pretty significant on my psyche. It led to a lot of really weird things. And I was fortunate enough to have people around. I shudder to think what it would have been like if I was just totally alone. When I did quarantine, when I first came to Korea, I was alone for 10 days, for 14 days the first time. I did it twice because I'm an idiot. Coincidentally, when I was filming season one of Invincible, that was one of the hardest things I've ever done. It was one of the psychological low points in my life. Amazingly, I wouldn't have anticipated that. I didn't see a single human face for two weeks. And even that, that's considering I was able to call people and, you know, I had Wi-Fi. It's just not the same. The other thing is you need like off time. There's a certain point at which throwing more energy at a thing actually starts to make it worse. For all our talks about grinding and working really hard and all might it through the pain, it is tough to talk about because probably for a lot of people, they're at the reverse end of the problem where they maybe should be putting more effort into things. But this end of the spectrum is also valid and real. There is a time where you need to back off a bit. Your brain needs rest. It has overheated and become corrupted. And although you're trying to grip really hard and force your way through issues, your hardware is on fire. Like my last laptop. Maybe that's why Omni-Man was writing books. I don't know. And it could be anything. It doesn't have to be productive. It doesn't have to fulfill a purpose. That's a mistake. The purpose it serves is not serving a purpose, if that makes sense. It's okay to let go a little bit. It helps your cause, even though it feels like it's detracting from your cause. Trust me, the problem will still be there even when you're not worrying about it. And the worrying about it is available to you at any time you want to pick it back up. So just leave it alone for a second. You know, do an activity. Find something. Find a hero baseball league. That fulfills both functions. Do some space travel. Mark seems to love that. Spend time with Oliver. I mean, there's a lot of things. That part is all true. The education as it leads to an occupation and a future, that's sort of a non-starter for me. That's whatever. I have to get better. I have to be better. Do you understand? Mark. Do you? I do. It's all of these things together. He's feeling the responsibility and the significance for the first time. Like he hasn't trained this whole season, even though you should really have been training this whole time, especially after the first Viltrumite attack. But he also doesn't do anyone any good if he destroys himself. Um, other universe, old alternate universe you told me to tell you that I don't love you. I know that's a lot to take in. Is your mom okay? She's okay. She's a lot stronger than she looks. Yeah, Debbie's a fighter for real. It's a warrior. I, I don't really want to talk about it. Eve would understand. Oh, sure. She's oscillating herself through a lot of these things. If you ever need a shoulder, I, I've got two. Yeah. <laughs> I <know. laughs> All right. Jeez. Oh, she does like him a lot. Wow. I like you or I'm lonely? Don't go into this half-heartedly, Mark. How do you reject a girl who hasn't expressed feelings for you yet because her alternate reality universe it's person nothing. told... Sorry. Yeah, it's tough. I don't know. I'm sorry, Mark. What are you sorry? Oh, okay. It's not fair. Basic sympathy. You don't deserve this. That also, I don't know. You don't deserve this. I don't know if deserve is the right thing, the right focus. It's not about deserving, but I guess the, the heart behind it is more important, the tone. See, like, I'm really good at destroying myself. To me, that's meaningless. Do I deserve it? Do I not deserve it? It's happening, and I have to deal with it. I'm happy for Mark that he was able to slip into that and see what really is there, which is the more important thing that I would miss in some situations where the words are what they are, but underneath that is just like, I really care about you. You're cared for. This is a really severe episode and a very sad, non-flashy way for season two to end. Nevertheless, there's something in it that's hopeful for me. It feels positive. Like Mark was not looking at things. He did not understand what was going on. And he had this, this great fear of what he might become, what his potential was. But this is a different level of understanding and depth. What would concern me is if he did go down that initial road, the reaction he had of, I had no choice. It's not my fault. Nothing bad happened. He deserved it. Bad guys go smush. But instead, the, the more painful, but I think more productive one of, yeah, this is not good. I don't like this. Something's got to change. I got to figure this out. Is this the escape scene? Please show it. I don't want to just get a preview of it and have to wait. Show the whole thing. Yo. What's up? You there? They all got black eyes in the same place. We are on the same side now. No. 
We're not. You turned against the Empire. Mark told me all about Yeah, mention Mark. Name drop Mark. Mark. Yeah, there it is. And he read your books. Leave him out of this. This isn't his fight. Let the boy have a moment of peace. That's oddly sweet. I'm not a Viltrumite anymore. Not really. Wow. Not a human either. What are you? Shame and regret for my actions. I see the suffering of lesser beings and it... Well, maybe you are human. Yeah, it's definitely not Viltrumite. Deeply. That's a new thing. What I did to those people. I understand the instinct to to die, but... Yeah, and your people are doing that on a thousand different planets right now. There's more that you can do. I deserve death. Also true, but... I miss my wife. Oh, no. (laughs) How the mighty have fallen... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, I want to see the breakout, damn it. Wait, there's another one. There's going to be another scene. Maybe there's a chance for a family again. <laughs> that would be insane, but awesome. I'm less worried about Omni-Man going against the Viltrumite Empire and more afraid for him <laughs> trying to go back to Debbie. Debbie being the universe's ultimate warrior. That was sort of a quiet, solemn ending to the season. There was, in fact, no second end credit scene. This really is what it is. This is what his life will be. And there's two ways that he can deal with that. He can, well, multiple ways. He can just become terrible, which is where his fear is coming from. It's valid. That That is a path. It's important to acknowledge that. He can just stay in sort of a deluded innocence forever until things really hit the fan. Way worse than it happened this episode of the season. Or he can wrap his head around it and he can do what he needs to do to become the person that can stomach it and do good. I think the way it will probably play out for Mark is something we've also seen with Eve and it also feels natural to me. And what also is just generally a, a trend or pattern for people in life, if you're trying to get it right. It's this like ebb and flow back and forth. Because the, the actual target, the point of getting it right is elusive and probably unobtainable to do perfectly. But like you're swinging side to side, but it's not just back and forth, it's also like upward or forward trajectory. And the range of the side to side, the length gets smaller and smaller, so you never quite get to a perfect point, but it is still progress. It, with Eve, it's kind of like, there's a lot of good I can be doing. Oh no, I overestimated my ability to do good. There's other things I need to consider. I'm just not going to do anything. And that way, actually, I probably should do something. I got all this great power, but how do I do it more carefully? Et cetera, et cetera, you know, fine tuning as she goes. With Mark, there's a bunch of ways that's happening. One is I need to make up for the damage my father did. I'm going to go all in full extreme every day, all the time. I actually, I kind of like Amber and I want a normal life. Uh, This normal life isn't working. I need to do more. I need to get better. I need to be maximally great right now, which is, I think, kind of what I'm feeling with the end scene on the roof. It's also with a self-identity. So I'm going to be a great hero. Being a hero is wonderful, just like my father. Oh, wait, my father is awful. This is what that looks like. I'm gonna be the total opposite of him. I can always be good 100% of the time. Oh wait, there's things I wasn't considering. It wasn't as simple as I thought it would be. There's a lot I need to do. But for me, this kind of struggle in itself is great. I care sort of less about the individual points, though those are very important, but about the the progress, the momentum, the direction. I think sometimes you meet people who are going through pretty awful things and are in a dark place, yet you can feel optimistic and positive about their future because you kind of see what their core is. And you're like, oh, with this core, they're going to figure it out eventually. I mean, they have these certain really special traits and like that will lead them to good places eventually, though there will be a lot of hardship and a lot of mistakes. I mean, that's just generally how I like to look at people and how I want to think about myself. Like, okay, I'm going to mess things up. Things are going to go wrong. I'm not going to get it perfect from the, from the gate, but I have the faith in the future. I have the spirit. I'm dedicated to getting it right eventually. There's something good that I'm aiming for that I believe is possible. Also, I really like how, and this goes back to an earlier point about not seeing the aim as like fixing everything materially, but looking inwards and fixing yourself, that he identifies the biggest point of work to be done, not out there in space or not in the multiverse, like I'm going to kill every threat or whatever, whatever, what have you. But man, there's stuff I really got to work out here. I have to make myself into a vessel of great things. And from there, I think I can do good things. This is not necessary, but if I were to rank the seasons, this is almost pointless because there's very heavy recency bias, right? I think that season one contains some of the best episodes. The season one, episode one ending credit scene is one of the best in the show. And the finale of season one, I think is just unmatched. But my initial impression after finishing this season is that the overall quality of the season episode to episode was, well, I liked it more. I think it was more consistent, especially the latter half of season two. I think from episode four onward is where it really took off for me in really unexpected ways. I mean, I joke about this show having so many subplots simultaneously. Some things that came up that were just amazing were like Rex's transformation and that whole thing, the bullet to the head somehow. Alan came out of nowhere. Omni-Man's books, just fantastic. Debbie being one of my favorite characters this season, doing so much more than just drinking wine and crying, though there was also drinking wine and crying. Immortal and Kate's 
re relationship. Come to think of it, basically everyone this season survived despite near death. The only real casualty was that cupboard. Though even that came back. Cecil becoming a lot more likable to me, almost seeming like he's just tired, you know? He's becoming more honest. Even the Viltrumites being a little more interesting to me than I thought they would be. They're terrible and I hate them, but they have something. Like that girl who showed up to fight Mark and to warn him. There's something there, right? Like she didn't just come in and kill him and wipe out humanity. She gave them a warning and like held herself back. There's something else to them. It may be not, you know, evil captain guy. Overall, it definitely assuaded my fears and was way better than I anticipated, which is great. And I can't wait for season three. And I heard that the gap won't be as much as between season one and season two, which is great.